porting software to RISC-V vectors without hardware. Um, so yeah, first a little bit of introduction. Uh, who am I? I'm, I have roots in hardware design. I was a FPGA engineer uh, developing some uh, gateway for, for special uh, equipment. Now I'm mostly software engineer and that's really important point uh, uh, because I'm like sort of on the uh, collision of those two worlds. Uh, currently, I'm working on most RISC-V software as part of a, uh, of a team uh, in RISE. I'll, I'll talk about it later. And as a side note, I do also CI workflows. I'll have a lightning talk tonight about it. Uh, so yeah, I, our team is part of RISE. RISE is uh, the sort of addition to RISC-V International, which is concentrated more, more or less mostly on software. Uh, and it uh, has a lot of uh, like member, member companies who want to bring uh, software on RISC-V to the like, first, uh, um, the, the best, provide the best support possible. So uh, yeah, a little bit of background. About a year, a little bit more, of, uh, more than a year ago, um, we had a task to port some system libraries to uh, RISC-V vectors. And the problem was that uh, there was no hardware support. So we could use QMU, it's, which is fine for verification if the code works, if, if it's correct. Uh, but it's no good if you want to really explore the platform in terms of uh, how it performs, like compare different algorithms, see like this assembly works better than this, for example, or, or the other way around. Of course, you can transfer some knowledge from other SIMD uh, or vector uh, extensions for other platforms, but RVV is really special in some ways. Uh, so yeah, as a project we chose Pixman, which is a pixel manipulation library used in Cairo and Chromium, for example. So it was like, it has really well compartmentalized uh, vector code, which we can like see how it is done on ARM and try to write it on RISC-V. Uh, yeah, so the, that, that moment I, I thought, yeah, I have hardware background. Let's see uh, if there is any kind of open source RVV capable core uh, and run it in a way that it's somewhat uh, possible to handle by software engineers who have no hardware background. Uh, yeah, so first goal is to have full RVV 1.0 support um, because yeah, that's our target. Second, uh, I really wanted to have Linux support because we are developing system libraries for Linux. So uh, it's only natural to have uh, Linux support, but that means that the core itself and the accelerator, the RVV accelerator needs to have MMU support, virtual memory. Next, it should be FPGA compatible. Of course, we could uh, use like very later simulation, but if we want to run Linux and preferably like entire distro like Ubuntu, uh, we don't want to spend half a day on booting Ubuntu and another half of a day trying to run something on it. We want it to have like relatively uh, real time performance, so to speak. Uh, fourth one, easy to use and deploy. As I said, we're targeting software developers. We don't want to, them to like install Vivado on their computers, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, fifth one, adjustable configuration uh, so that we can experiment with different, like, uh, I don't know, VLANs and, and maybe lane configuration and stuff. Um, yeah, so how the project turned out, first I researched into the CPU course it's themselves. At the time, the only viable option was Pulp Ara, uh, which promised to have full uh, RVV 1.0 support. Uh, we'll see about that later. Uh, and there was working progress MMU pro support, which was nice. Uh, we'll see about it later. Uh, and yeah, it supports multiple configurations. So I could like select VLAN of 125, 128, or like very large, like 2048, and see the difference uh, for different algorithms. Uh, and regarding ha hardware platform, so as I said, I mean, it's sort of a uh, side project. Uh, so we didn't really want to buy $10,000 of a PGA to experiment uh, to see if, if it's even possible. Uh, so uh, the alternative, which uh, was really interesting, was uh, AWS has this EC2 F1 instances, which are paid by hour. Uh, and there exists a FireSim project with, along with Chipyard, which allows like really easy uh, deployment of your SOC design of choice on this uh, FPGA. Uh, and in terms of like 
giving it to, to the software developers, there, there could be like a script which deploys uh, FPGA in, in the cloud, creates an instance, and gives them uh, console access. So it's easy to, uh, to work with that. Uh, then came the interesting part of integration and testing and debugging, I forgot about it. Uh, so first, uh, integrating Pulp Ara into Chipyard, uh, I based it on the existing CVA6 uh, integration. Uh, as I said at the time, uh, Pulp Ara didn't have MMU support like official. There was some patch set here and there, which I tried to like, glue together with other patches. And it's, I mean, in the end it somewhat worked. Uh, and I settled for the most default configuration of ARA, which is two lanes VLAN of 2048. I managed to get Fmax of 80 megahertz on the core itself. Uh, since it's running in FireSim, it's a little bit lower, but still it's more or less like this. And AWS FPGA has like a lot of resources, so I could stick a couple of more cores in there if uh, multiprocessing was supported by the platform, which is not. Uh, yeah, so then, Finally, after I was hoping it would take like one month or so, half a, year, half a year later, I was there debugging MMU support. Uh, so once I got it working, I ran some benchmarks. There is a brilliant RVV bench suit uh, on GitHub and along with instruction test. So uh, the results were, well, let's say, unsatis unsatisfactory um, to say the least. Uh, 145 out of 188 tests were successful for instructions. So um, the rest resulted either in CPU crash or program crash, so I needed to reboot the simulation, which was fun. Uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, still some of it worked, which I, I could test some algorithms which didn't use those like uh, instructions which which failed, uh, and uh, I get I got like real speed up in, in some uh, algorithms, which was basically the goal to, to see the difference between scalar uh, algorithm and vector algorithm. And I also had an um, option now to see like what is the difference between using this kind of assembly versus this kind of assembly. And I was able to optimize some algorithms with it. Uh, the RVV bench instruction uh, test also like spits out the table, how long given instruction takes on, on, this, um, on this particular target, uh, which is really nice to like basically assess uh, by looking at the assembly uh, what is the performance difference without running the actual code. Uh, yeah, so what's next for the project? Uh, for the project, uh, my project itself, because right now we have hardware targets with RVV, so you might ask, uh, what's the point? Uh, and it's a very good question. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have targets, but we have targets with very small VLANs. So we have the Canon V K230, which is, uh, yeah, it's what it is. It, it has VLAN of 128, and we have Banana Pi, which has VLAN of 256. But there are no like huge VLANs for now. So if we if I want to compare how this uh, code runs on like low and lower end. Uh, compared to the higher end uh, targets, I cannot do that with uh, current like uh, off the shelf uh, um, hardware. So that could be really nice to use this framework, which I already did uh, to test uh, it on different VLANs. Uh, so I want to rebase on upstream ARA, uh, which has some improvements. It has official MME support. It has uh, some bug fixes, hopefully, which fix those instruction errors. Uh, then I want to support more configurations to just really granularly see uh, uh, the performance for different VLANs and lane counts, for example. And then I want to actually pack it up for the software developers to use. So, uh, so it's easy for a regular developer to spin up a target and test their code. And uh, as a like, final cherry on top, I would love to upstream the changes to the fire sim and like the uh, chipyard so that it's officially integrated in the chipyard uh, framework. Yeah, but that's for the project. The more important question is, uh, what's next for Risk Five? Uh, because, as I said, I come from the software uh, developer perspective here, uh, and uh, when I was on the Risk Five Summit Europe this year, there was a recurring topic uh, from software engineers: how to, like, how do you expect us software engineers to? create code to port software to like new and shiny acceleration uh, uh, extensions 
if there is no actual hardware, right? So, uh, how how is it? Uh, how could it be possible to improve this process? Uh, I mean, RISC-V vectors has been ratified in I think late 2021, and three years later, only three years later, we have actual hardware which we can develop on. And from my perspective, the software like. It's, it's the main goal of the processor to run software, right? So uh, it, it would be only natural to include the software like engineering, the thinking about how the software will work uh, in the like uh, extension ratification process. So it would be in the perfect world. Uh, there should be a moment before the ratification. So here is the reference uh, uh, implementation of our uh, new and shiny um, vector extension, for, for example, and please, software engineers, tell us, will you use it? What, what part of it will you use it? Yeah, so, or should we change something to, to improve the performance uh, even better? Uh, yeah, so that's more or less open question for, for everyone, I think. Uh, yeah, and uh, thank you for your attention. Here's the uh, QR code to the project with all the uh, changes to different repos, uh, to the benchmarks as well. Uh, yeah, and my LinkedIn as well. So, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Are there questions? Of course, of course. Uh, sounds good. Uh, sorry, you might have said this earlier. What what algorithms are you porting to the? to the vector unit or the, the vector instruction set? Yes, so uh, inside, because uh, the main focus uh, of us was a Pixman, so a Pixman is more or less like pixel manipulation, so like graphical stuff. Uh, for example, it's used in Chromium to like overlay different layers with some <coughs> alpha channel and mixing and stuff. Uh, so it's like really nice uh, thing to vectorize because you have like a large uh, vector with uh, RGB. For example, I, I ported the RGB uh, 565 to RGB 888, which was like very much used in the Pixman. Uh, and yeah, so these kinds of algorithms are really nice to, to vectorize. What, do, and in terms of the porting, like are you porting from a particular architecture to RBV? Yeah, so for Pixman, it's really nice that it's really compartmentalized. There is scalar version like available if any non uh, like backend is available, like uh, architecture specific backend. And then you can add other fast paths. So for example, for, I don't know, MMX or some other um, like CMD uh, related things. Okay, so it's, you're probably porting from like an, if it's an embedded thing, it's ARM or something, right? Yeah, like uh, you could use any kind of uh, implementation as a reference. So for example, in our team, we have uh, people coming from ARM or uh, x86, uh, like a CMD uh, background. So. Uh, ARM people use ARM as a reference, and uh, x86 people use uh, like x86 related Cindy uh, as reference. Yeah. Okay, there are two questions. I'll take that one to make my walking easier. <laughs> First, do you have? I don't know. Yeah. Do Do you have approximate like? Hmm. Intuition now, how it compares with ARM and the x86 in terms of performance. You mean uh, vector extension, right? Yeah, and especially it's a different, quite different architecture uh, from CIM, right? I don't have a figure. I mean, it's really dependent on the target. And I mean, as I said, we only have two targets with RVV, uh, which you can actually measure uh, against. Uh, and I didn't, uh, in regard of Pixman, we don't have yet like full implementation, so I, I cannot like see uh, the test suit, uh, how it performs on risk five compared to others. So I don't have a figure, but yeah, it's definitely something to, to see in the future. Okay, there's one more up there. So it sounds like that when you're testing this stuff, you're booting a full Linux system, is that yep. correct? So have you considered doing some kind of syscall translation? I mean, if you're just interested in benchmarking the user space code, could you sort of do what syscall do you mean, translation? Uh, translation? So when the when your simulation uh, issues a system system call instruction, you can uh, call into the host kernel and issue what, the. What do you mean host kernel? So because ah, it's, it's difficult it's to explain. Like, uh, uh, I mean the simulation of the um, of the CPU itself is like part simulation because it's running on FPGA, so it's like separate system. 
right? And I'm running the Linux on the target, you know, on sure. the PGA. Yeah, okay, so yeah. it's basically the, the only way of communicating between the host, which is cooperating all the stuff, is either via block device or Ethernet for Fire Sim at least. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, actually I made sort of mailbox on the block device when I can like put files on it and then read them on the um, like target, uh, and that was the means of communication for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're thinking of something along those lines, like similar to how QMU user. No. No. So it's a, yeah, it's not yeah. like uh, emulation. Yeah. Uh, it's like re sort of real hardware, but I yeah. mean in PGA and a little bit different in terms of communication with uh, outside world. Fantastic. There's one more question up there. Just uh, say it and I'll repeat it. Okay. Yeah. So actually, BSC in Barcelona, they do have a vector platform, mm -hmm. right, which they even taped out or showed it at this five minute also. Mm -hmm. you, they are porting some HPC based algorithm. So mm -hmm. the VLAN that you are not satisfied, we may help you. You can apply for access to that and then you can also do that. Yep. So BSC has some uh, vector implementations that uh, could be helpful and uh, you yes. should work together. So, uh, I mean, uh, important thing is that a year ago there was no implementation <laughs> and this project started a year ago. So, I mean, for example, I would gladly test the Saturn vector unit, for example, which, which has already the chipyard integration and, and the, thus the FireSim integration and I'll probably do that. Uh, but yeah, when I started a year ago, so actually two years after the ratification of uh, RVV, uh, there was only Pulp Ara, which was half working. Yeah? And only now, after three years, we have some actual first hardware and second uh, open source course. Yeah, so now it's, it's nice, but a year ago it w wasn't. <laughs> yeah. You can ask Samsung to pay for uh, Yeah, I, I think I cannot talk about it that much, but uh, the products with Risk Five are coming, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> the products are coming. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs>